Hi, this is Joe from Borderlands Homestead. I'm going over today on how I groom my English or my Angora rabbits. This is Jack Jr. He is a Sable Point French Angora, and he is kind of curious about everything today. I am going to groom him up. This is Jack Jr. And as I was saying a minute ago, it looks like his coat is starting to release. So he will be starting to molt real soon, or is starting his process of molting. What they do is they usually molt from the spine and then go down through down the sides. Position a little bit better. But I have several tools that I use. <coughs> I have a wide tooth comb. This is the coarse. And then here is fine. And then I also have a handled comb. This has uh, got the coarse setting. This is just a little bit easier for me to maneuver in the smaller areas. And then I have just a plain old dog slicker brush. I make sure that the, um, the teeth on these are pretty are dull because uh, some of them can be really scratchy when you get down to the down to the skin. And then I actually had a what I, you know what I call my makeshift blower, but it is actually a air mattress inflator. Works pretty well. Uh, most uh, Angora people that show, uh, they will have dog, what they call it, you know, dog grooming blower, and they're variable settings, and they also have a little bit heat, but th there's a lot more features to that than than this little guy. But this, he does, this does what I need it to do and actually does it pretty darn well. So I use this. But what I usually start doing is, you know, if look, I'm looking for mats when I'm feeling them all over the place. Like when he, poing! Because a lot of, they'll usually have the mats back here. These aren't that bad because you can tease these apart. I'm actually trying to save his coat for as long as I can because I have a show on the 21st of November I'd like to go to, but I don't think he's going to make it, but we will see. But anyhow, and then, you know, back here on this side as well, and I usually, you know, we'll lift them up to see if they've got any yuck yucks in their rear end. And then another place is, oop, speaking of, Jack. There we go. <laughs> He's jumpy today. But um, right behind their armpits and then another you know, right behind their ears, and then under their chin and in their chest. That's going to be the areas that are going to be the most matted. But I will start blowing it, because that's what I do first. And the idea of blowing is to separate the fibers, and then get right down to the skin. And it also blows up a lot of dander, so if you are real sensitive to animal dander, and especially rabbit, it's probably best to use a mask. But the idea is to separate all of that. It'll make the little neps come up to the surface a little bit more. But the idea is to just work it without pulling it and um, to get right down, get right down to the skin. So I will start that.
and the dog gro grooming blowers are a lot easier to handle. <laughs> but what I'm doing is basically kind of going diagonally or perpendicular to the mat and breaking out, breaking it up. But he hasn't been groomed almost a week and a half. So if I were on this every few days like I should be, then he wouldn't have a matted bottom as much as he has right now. That actually shows you how much this coat is actually starting to release. So I might have to do another video real soon on how to pluck a French. Yeah, because I'm not even pulling hard on on those mats. It was just coming right out. I know, Jack. And then I'll go back to blowing.
Sager brush and you'll see little little kind of pills that will work up and I just just gently kind of brush against the surface there because I'm trying just to get those out but not pull out any wool just trying to pull out the stuff that is broken loose and come to the surface or in this case like where the moisture and the dew it kind of opens up the open up opens up the locks Between his ears. Yeah, he's. So what we'll see is the side. It's all groomed up. Pull it up, fluff it up again. You got the groomed side versus the ungroomed side. Now while I'm doing this, um, Angora rabbits, they are a real joy. They're like the puppy dogs of the rabbit world. Uh, so when it comes to homesteading, if you want a rabbit that's very, you know, very much a pet, but yet can provide you uh, meat and fiber to use for whether it's your own purpose or to sell, Angoras should be a consideration. Um, because for like for example the French Angoras they are designed to be a meat rabbit as well with the body type so you'll it take they do take a little while to grow out um, you know 16 weeks versus 12 weeks for like a Californian or a New Zealand rabbit which is specifically a meat breed um, the giant Angoras you can those guys will be you know, 10, 12 pounds. French be, you know, nine, yeah. I've seen some as tiny as seven pounds. So about seven to seven to 10 pounds. And um, the giants are a little bit harder to find. In those guys, you have to, you have to shear uh, versus like a French Angora where you have an option, you can either shear or pluck. That was a mosquito. I got him that time. And oh, where was I going? But oh mm, mm, let's get myself back on a train train of thought here. Uh start with the smallest. English Angoras, they are the biggest puppy dogs of them all. And they're also the smallest breed, but due to their fiber composition, they are the most high maintenance out of them all where if you miss an English Angora grooming, 
you're pretty, you know, starting to get into mats bill. Some are, have more guard hair than wool, and so they'll be a little bit easier to groom and everything. But in general, they're, they're higher maintenance out of the five Angora breeds. There's five of them. Uh, then the next, yeah, next size is the French and the Satin. Satin has a shinier fur and they produce the least amount of, of wool out of all the breeds. But it, it's, it, it's because it's really fine and it's really light. But you can actually get a premium for their wool because, because it's just really gorgeous when it's all spun up. They're also the more, they're one of the hardest to find uh, depending on which area of the country you're in. Then the French Angora is, I wouldn't call it the most common, but it's a lot more ready, readily available of the breeds. And it's also, you know, a little bit lower maintenance than everybody else, just because they, their the guard hair to the wool composition is just makes it easier. Plus, they molt. The Santa Angoras molt too. Molt is basically shedding. Hey, Tori.